when he turned his back from shoulder to shoulder it looked like as wide as the tailgate of a truck and this darkness literal darkness just came like all over just just all over me except where i was standing this thing let out the most blood curdling mind blowing spine tingling scream that you've ever heard in your life and it cut through me like a knife and I knew that they were going to take me. I just knew it. And then the next thing I can remember is being levitated. Well, when I look in there, uh, I see two big eyes staring back at me. Hello and welcome. You're listening to The Bump Podcast, a place for the believers of the unexplained, monsters, and paranormal. Join us, and we'll go face-to-face -face with what goes bump in the night. Hey there, believers. I got a fantastic episode for you today. I'm super excited about it. Um, I started to clap. I, I got to watch that. I'm bad for it. Uh, my students tease me about it. My wife teases me about it. I, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm in church or if I'm at school or whatever, if I'm, being, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm a clapper. You know, I like to encourage. So I'm, I'm constantly clap, clap, clap. But uh, I'm excited about this uh, this episode in particular. I'm bringing on a guest, um, Barry. I'm not going to get into his last name. I don't know if he wants to share that or not. But Barry wants to share his uh, lifetime of experiences with us. The very serious episode. Um, I'll just cover over, you know, in a nutshell, what we're going to get into is when he was young, um, he believed he was being abducted frequently. He uh, was having bouts of sleep paralysis. And then, you know, he as he got older, he he got into some pretty dark topics, some dark subjects with journalism, into UFOs and black-eyed kids. And um, as life goes on, he started putting pieces of the puzzle together. He started figuring things out. Um, he went overseas on a missions trip to Nicaragua and uh, things really just escalated from there. So I'm going to let Barry talk about it. Um, I'm just extremely excited to, to hear how this all works out, to see what's going on today in Barry's life. Um, so we'll just, we'll share that together. I haven't spoken to him a, a great deal. You know, he gave me just like a, a Cliff's Notes version of what's going on. Or what's been going on and you know i want to hear more i i really believe that you all the listeners are going to love this um you'll probably have a lot of input a lot of support for barry and i, I think that's a wonderful thing and we all need to support each other with anything that we go through you know we this community is like a family you know um not just between listeners i know we have listeners that listen to half a dozen different podcasts, maybe 10 podcasts in the same vein. Well, all of us podcasters are becoming friends and family too with each other. Um, we're all pulling together. We all have uh, our own mission, our own, our own goals and what we're being led to do. And a lot of time that, that weaves together. Um, you've seen that with me and the guys from Appalachian intelligence. Um, the guys with Appalachian Intelligence, the Hollow Sky, the guys with the Hollow Sky with Tony, um, Tony with Sword and Staff, Sword and Staff with me, and it, you know it it just flows together like that, you know. Um, and there's a lot of in between, you know, a lot branching out and you know forking off in between. Silver Pilled Podcast, um, Cryptids of the Corn. Is uh, there's just so many, you know, from the shadows. There, there's so many shows um, and podcasters out there that that get into this same thing 
um, Shane Jones, uh, the inquiries of our reality. He He's into this stuff. Everybody has their own perspective of what we're talking about. And it just builds and builds. Um, and th- there's some key central players in that. Um, like dark waters. <laughs> you know, everybody, all roads go through dark waters at some point. You know, we all we all lean on him. Well, let's not forget blurry creatures. But there, I just shouted out about eight or ten podcasts that you all need to listen to. Um oh, that's so fringy. That's another one. That's one of my f- new favorites. I was just on their their show a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Love those people over there. Um as far as this show goes, there are going to be some changes going on again. I'm trying to figure out uh, the the website. It's not looking, it's not working like I want it to. Um, so I'm going to probably just like tear it down and rebuild it this summer. Um, as far as memberships go and supporting the show, I'm very grateful to everybody that's on Patreon and has been a member on the website. What I'm going to do is probably go back to being just exclusively on Patreon and focusing on that and making the website for, you know, reference and uh, hollering at me, you know, leaving it open for the podcast store and stuff like that, the Believer store. Um, But I'm going to make some changes on YouTube also. I believe what I'm going to do is... Just see how it goes anyway. You know, I try to post a video every week on YouTube as well as the show. That way you have the audio and you have the visual if you'd rather watch it. I think I'm going to shorten the videos onto YouTube, you know, put a clip on there. But make the videos exclusively for patrons. You know, if you want to get on Patreon and watch the interaction, um, might just leave them uncut and just... You can just get everything that's going on and you get to watch it and sit in with this kind of thing, you know, and uh, like I said, this summer, having the schedule that I have, I'll probably have a little bit more free time and we'll we'll get into some stuff. Um, I'm talking with a few guys that I I don't want to open. I I don't want to openly discuss the stuff that's going on, but just know that there's about three or four of the podcasters that I just mentioned. We're going to have a uh, an adventurous summer. I'll tell you that. All right. Um, let's go ahead and bring on Barry. Um, before I do that, if you guys want to get a hold of me, thebumppodcast at gmail.com. Holler at me. I'll get back in touch with you if you want to be on the show. Uh, if you just want to talk about a certain episode, um. Holler at me on there. I can I can try to put you in line with people. Our Discord server is jumping off. Check it out on Discord, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all those things. But if you're if you're trying to reach out for the show to be on the show, email is the best way, or you can call the bump phone, and that is 304-812-0553. You can call it, leave a voicemail, or you can just text. Either way, don't matter. Um, I'd just love to hear from you. Uh, let's keep this show going as long as we can. The more people that get in here, the more content we'll have, the longer it'll last. Um, three years. Ain't that something? Thank you, guys. Thank the good Lord above for letting this show go for three years. All right. I'll shut up. Let's bring on Barry. Yep. Yeah, so um, I am one of those kids that... Well, I'm one of those people as a kid that uh, grew up with uh, grandparents that um, constantly had like the weekly world news in their in their house. Um, So I'm very familiar with Bat Boy and alien abductions and things like that, like from an early age. And I think at even an early age, I knew that 97 percent of everything in those magazines was total crap. Um, But I was fascinated with them. Um, and, um, so I would visit this particular grandparent, um, and I'd read through these things and I just, I became at a young age, just borderline obsessed with like alien abductions in particular. And this was 
this was like late 80s. Well, no, hold on. It was early to mid 80s um, where that whole thing was starting to take off where you had um, Whitley Stryber's book had gotten a lot of attention, uh, communion. Um, and it seemed like every time you turn on the TV to Inside Edition or whatever, it was something about alien abductions. Um, and so, and I specifically remember I would have this dream. I'm hoping it was a dream. Um, but it was only when I was at that grandparents' house where I was laying in the middle of a cow pasture and there were cows all around me standing on two legs and just kind of looking down at me in the same way that you always hear the abduction stories, you know, where someone's on a table and the, and the grays are, are looking down. And so that always freaked me out. And I never told anyone about it because it's kind of embarrassing. But, you know, as I got a little older, I just assumed that it was the influence of uh, all the stories from those weekly world news magazines I was reading. Um, but as I got a little older, uh, probably like around... I don't know, maybe like 11 or 12, um, I started to have these experiences at night where I would wake up and, and this isn't just at that grandparent's house. This is, you know, at my home, uh, 11 or 12 years old, I would wake up and it would be just an instant thing. It's not like something startles you and you kind of groggily come to like a jerk awake. I, well, I say jerk awake, but you're, you're lying. I'm lying still on my back and I can't move, and I'm instantly terrified, um, and even, like, you know, trying to focus, okay, maybe I can, let me, let me just concentrate, move my fingers, maybe I can do that, right. and uh, it just never worked, and it would, it would go on for about five or ten minutes until I could finally summon the courage to, like, call for one of my parents, which, you know, when you're 11, 12, 13 years old, it's kind of embarrassing, <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. having a bad dream and calling a mommy and daddy, but, that's how bad it was. Um, so I also, on occasion, wake up in the mornings with these minor nosebleeds. I'd wake up and there would be like a little bit of blood on the pillow, dried blood, uh, you know, under my nose. And so as someone that has read about abduction experiences quite frequently, you add all that together and right. you're like, oh my gosh, I'm being abducted by aliens. And so... From the ages of like 12 to 14 or 15, there, there was that fear in the back of my head. I'm like, is that really what's happening to me? Like, it, it, there's so much evidence to support all these the stories I've read. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think the next, the next, uh, I don't want to leave anything out. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, take your time, man. At, at some point, I guess probably around. 17 16 or 17 um it just seemed to stop I, I i can't recall a time after like 15 years old where i experienced that feeling of waking up um and just being terrified so um i went to college did the college thing uh never dealt with it there um Came out of college, you know, had those couple of fun years and I never experienced it there. Um, and then, and this is where I may have to Tarantino the story. Um, and I didn't understand this or realize this until, you know, I'm going through the talking points to have this conversation with you. Um, during that time where I wasn't experiencing what I now know was sleep paralysis when I, during the time that i wasn't having that was a time in my life where i experienced a lot of paranormal stuff um really? yeah so i i had one very intense i don't know the word i have like ghost encounter um i saw uh what i I know for sure two UFOs, maybe four, two of them may have been, been easily explainable. Um, just um, things like that, like um, not all the time, but enough to understand now looking back on it, that maybe there was something going on there. Um, and uh, again, though, I didn't realize that until after the fact. 
but so did college, had those couple of, you know, fun years or whatever. And um, I ended up getting married. Um, right around the time that I, my wife and I were engaged, I started to, uh, I made the decision to pursue a career in uh, what I was then calling paranormal journalism. Um, you know, this was when blogs were still a thing. And it's really? before, it's, it was right when the ghost hunting shows were starting to really catch their footing. Um, and so I started really, really digging into research for the strangest things I could find. Um, and I had a couple of pieces published by what were at the time fairly well-known, reputable um, online publications. Um, and I was looking into things specifically uh, like uh, UFOs, alien abductions. I got really, really, I went really far down the Black Eyed Kids rabbit hole. Um, to the point where I published an article on Black Eyed Kids Online and it exploded. Um, I got like an idiot. I put my email address at the, I, I gave the publisher's permission to put my email address at the end of the, end of the article. I know I got 500 emails Oh wow! Um, about people with experiences where they themselves thought the Black Eyed Kid um, phenomenon was nonsense, but they had experiences that were similar. Um, you know, entities like asking for invitation into their car or into their house, uh, right. entities that had black eyes, like no pupils, entities that they would meet and just cause this overwhelming sense of dread. And so as I was going through that phase of my life and really digging into these um into these topics, I started to get this overwhelming sense of, and this is going to sound cheesy, but it's the only way I can think of it. Like, so um, one, one moment that just peeks up in my mind is like literally leaving um, a Walmart one night and walking to my car and it's dark and there's not many people out. And I just feel like I'm being watched. I feel like there's something not following me, but something that's like aware of me, if that makes sense. Yep. And I would get that feeling at least once or twice a week. And it wasn't too long after that, that my sleep paralysis started again. Mm. Um, this time when it started, it was a lot more severe. Um, it, it There were nights where as I laid down and turned out the light, I knew it was coming. Not all the time, every now and then. I almost knew, like I could feel it. I'm like, it's going to happen tonight. Um, and every time I got that feeling, it did happen. Um, this time when I was uh, experiencing the sleep paralysis, it's the same thing. I would wake up all of a sudden, instantly afraid, can't move. It almost feels like it's hard to breathe. Um, now, I know a lot of sleep paralysis stories um, come with, uh, you know, I saw figures in the room. Or, you know, I, I heard things. I never, only once did I ever actually see something. What, what I would, at the time, I, I, I figured it was like one of the, like a shadow person. Hmm. Um, only once did I, did I experience that. Um, there were a lot of auditory uh, pieces to it. Um, footsteps, uh, what I thought was maybe someone else breathing other than my wife i mean it was very pronounced um like deeper breathing um and i guess on an average it would last about 20 minutes can't talk can't move like i'm even like i'm 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 like trying my best to just move my pinky over just to kind of like scratch my wife to get her attention cuz i'm terrified right um so this went on for maybe two years. I uh, I tried to figure out probably three to four times a month this would happen for for over a, a space of about two years. Um, it's also very important to point out that um, at this point in my life, um, I was a non-believer. I was an atheist, um, and uh, so the idea of like. Uh, praying for protection or praying for understanding or wisdom like none of that was even in my toolbox I didn't have a toolbox I was just <laughs> I didn't know I'm just terrified no idea what to do right um so 
uh, I won't go into this part of my life, but um, made some very bad decisions in my life. Um, and um, one thing kind of led to another. And um, I ended up giving my life to Christ. And um, as a new believer, knowing what that means on a like a on a base level and then kind of trying to understand and learn it um so even during that time they were still from sleep paralysis but you know i had people at my church that were um kind of walking me through what it looks like to follow christ and um how that how like things in my life that i needed to change um i had kept the sleep paralysis stuff to myself um, my, my wife knew a little bit, um, cause even still it's like, you know, I'm waking up terrified. I feel like a frightened child. It's a little embarrassing. Um, and so I never really mentioned it to anyone. Uh, they did know that I used to dabble in, in like the paranormal journalism. Um, I even got into ghost hunting at one point. I had some of the oh, equipment yeah. and heard and saw stuff that to this day, like, is why I firmly do believe, you know, there are ghosts, there are, um, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but, um, but yeah, so gave my life to Christ. And as I'm walking through that, you know, some of the people, the community that kind of drew around me at church was like, well, um, we can see that, you know, it look, it seems like you've got a genuine faith that you're, you're open and you're, and you're curious about what else to do to get closer to God. So it looks like your next step is baptism. And so I scheduled the baptism. I got baptized um, and just kind of carried on with life. And um, I realized probably about six months later, uh, the sleep paralysis had stopped. And so I kind of I sat down with, um, with my brother one day because he was the one person I'd actually really gone deep into the sleep paralysis thing with because he's always been interested in the paranormal too and you know, we would kind of bounce ideas off each other. Right. And um, he's like, so when, when is the last time you had it? And I can't give you an exact date or anything like that. Uh, the last time I experienced it was about five days before I got baptized. After right. I got baptized, nothing, not a peep. Wow. Um, so to me, that was... I mean, it sounds kind of selfish, like, okay, God, you know, show me one more thing that you're there, that you're real. Um, it's almost like I'm showing off, <laughs> <It's> oh, like, <laughs> um, which is really cool. Um, and so after I realized that I had no problem telling people about the sleep paralysis, because it's like, it's one, I understand that it happens. And now it will at that time, I was like, and you know, maybe there's a demonic element to it because you know, once I legitimately gave my life to Jesus. And even if you, even if you do think baptism is nothing more than a symbol, right. like apparently so to demons, <laughs> like, I mean, it, <laughs> um, so yeah. And so um, that's where I was for several years. Um, and that was pretty powerful. That was uh, to me, one of the defining moments of, okay, not only is there a God, um, He's as powerful as he says. He's capable of everything he says. Uh, he does have my best interest at heart. Um, so that was really, that was a huge moment. Um, the part two of the story, unless you, anything that you want to call out or point out, because part two of the story is 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 little, takes, it takes a turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this would be a good spot for me to, to ask a question. Slurry of questions because I do have yeah. a few. Uh, one, I I truly appreciate you sharing the story with me, man. Oh, absolutely. It's, I'm like, it's hard for me to keep my mouth shut, but I didn't want to interrupt you. You know, <laughs> there's yeah. there's so much going on, and it's so. I, I just thank God that you know this part is behind you that yeah. you made it through all that. Um, one this intense ghost encounter. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take you too far off on a tangent, but I would love to hear. Oh yeah. No, this. it's, and it's so, and as a Christ follower that has put the vast majority of interest in that kind of stuff behind me, 
it's a wrestling match because during that so i this is whole i'm trying to go off on a tangent i understand there are things in the world that a lot of people see as paranormal and supernatural and if you boil it down and look at where it comes from it's it's demonic it's all it is yes, yes. however i personally just my opinion believe mm-hmm. that there are certain ghost encounters that are separate from that how why i don't know right it's just my experiences so um i grew up in a very very rural part of virginia um and it's um it's a it's so it was very heavy in like um hunting and there were a lot of like logging companies so there's like logging roads everywhere and um but there are occasions where and i've heard uh so i've heard family members that are in the logging industry so as they're as they're clearing tracts of land it's nothing well it used to not be nothing um it's not uncommon to come by an unmarked slave cemetery um and so you know hearing those stories as a kid is fun um but um there was one night where um i was probably about 15 i couldn't have been any older than 16 because if i was 16 and it was a saturday night i would not have been at home um so i'm (laughs) guessing i was 15 um and i'm uh, at home i'm I'm babysitting my younger brother uh as my parents are out and i'm sitting and i'm watching tv and i get up i'm going to the kitchen for something i don't remember what it is but when i get up um just randomly like my 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 field of vision just passes by the living room window as i'm turning around to go to the kitchen and i see a man standing on the porch my first thought is like who the hell is out on the porch why are they here like it's it's like 10 o'clock at night um and then as i kind of freeze and look at it and i'm it's maybe eight to ten feet between me and the other side of the living room window. And it's an African-American man. I'm pretty, sh- pretty sure, um, obviously, you know, the, it, there's some translucence to it, so you can't be positive. Pretty sure it's an African-American man. Um, he's wearing a tattered gray suit. And the, the suit was the part that I think threw me at first because, oh, this is an actual person. There was a very, very, like the gray suit seemed almost uh, physical. Like if I were to step out on the porch, like I could actually hold it in my, like that was more real than the person was. It was really strange. Um, He's wearing a bowler hat, like an old school bowler hat. Um, I think he was holding like a walking stick. I'm not sure. Like a walking stick or a cane. Um, and everything below that, the window cut off. And there was a good five seconds. I'm just sitting there staring at him. Wow. And it just eventually just kind of, it, it, it doesn't like wink out. It just kind of like dissipates sort of almost, almost like fog and um, scared the crap out of me. Um, and uh, the next day, uh, let's see, if I was 15, my younger brother was 11. Yeah. So the next morning, rather than tell my parents, um, I was like, dude, guess guess what I guess what I saw last night? Because he's a huge Ghostbusters fan. He's like Ghostbusters nerd. Mm. Um, I was like, guess what I saw last night? He's like, what? I was like, I think I saw I think I saw a ghost like on the porch. He's like, oh, is it was it the black guy with the bowler hat? No way. <laughs> Turns out he wow. seen he had seen him twice uh in wow. the house and on the porch um and so it was one of those things where i mean there's a lot of stuff that i've seen or especially when i was ghost quote unquote ghost hunting stuff that i had seen and heard that i could easily explain away if i really wanted to this right. there's no way there's nothing that i could there's absolutely that yeah i saw the ghost of an african-american man wearing a bowler hat that my brother had also seen and never told anybody um in that same house on occasion um you would hear two different times um like at night you could hear someone we had a we had a staircase that went down into the basement that led to the main floor um you could hear footsteps and i would try to commit well it's just a house settling you know that's the famous excuse uh 